Hey yo, it's Guido coming at you with a Tactics Talk, and I've got for you today an Ace Tanker Bottom Tier Loss. Yes, Ace Tanker is a bottom tier and a loss. Pretty fantastic. I don't know if that says more about my playing or about the T-34-1 being fairly miserable tank with nobody really playing it and the requirements for Aces being low. I don't know, but I'll take it. Here I am, T-34-1, Tier 7. Chinese medium tank. It's an interesting tank. I want to like it. Sometimes it's hard to like. It's sort of like a tier 7 T-59 with no armor. <laughs> I don't know. It's not a bad tank. Like most of the Chinese tanks, the gun hits pretty hard and the mobility is okay. The armor is questionable and the depression is miserable. So I'm headed over here to the east side and I'm going up for the hill. We'll take a shot at the Scorpion. You can see that massive dispersion I missed by 15 miles maybe 16, and I'm gonna to try to head up the hill. Let's see what we got. I'm gonna be a little bit careful on this, as I recall. Yep, I didn't wanna push up because I saw the T49, and T49s tend to pen me automatically, so I really didn't wanna get penned. I'll wait for him, I'll take the shot. I knew I had friends coming up, so now we've got several guys. Uh oh, P Victoria, not looking at me, thank you. That's what happens when you sit next to 5100s, that you get ignored a lot, especially if you're a lower tier. They really wanna hit that 5100. Getting rid of him, people love it. now. Last thing I want to do is come around and put my side to this T49. I, like I said before, they tend to pen me, and I'm irritated here. This T29 has no clue. Probably zoomed into sniper mode, and now I'm being a bit of a meanie because it's so irritating. And I'm just going to stop being an idiot and move on. Oh, sorry, that's my fault. So what's... <laughs> isn't that typical? You're being a jack arse to somebody, and then the, the moment... <laughs> You stop, you turn around, you're, you're doing the same thing to somebody else you just got all bent about. Scorpion G takes it. I saw him moving around, so he's he is what you would call overextended. Now, this is an important concept, folks. If you see somebody doing something like this, and for some reason that tends to be me doing that kind of thing, he really thought he was going to come around and create a, a second front, right? So he's, <laughs> he's, he's the person who remained nameless who decides, hey, I got an idea. Let's create a second front. That'll really confuse him. Well, that's all fine and dandy until you create a second front and there's enough reserve forces to turn and fight you. So do not create second fronts unless you know you're not going to be overextended. And that Scorpion was very definitely overextended. Gets jumped on. We take him down. And I'm at 941 hit points of damage. And with all my hit points, I'll move back around here. And these guys are having a bit of a hard time pushing into them which is a little bit surprising because they really don't have anything here. Hold, let's just count this, folks. Let's take a look at this. This is a misappropriation of forces. The Tiger one died. I, <laughs> how are these three guys still alive? 34-1 is dead. There's a T-49. There's a T-29. And there's a P-Victoria. And there's one, two, three, four, five. Now, granted, two of us were doing something else just moments ago. But counting the Tiger one, there were six of us sitting over here. This hill should already be ours, so I'm going to come up here and see what I can't do to maybe help these guys decide to do something. And holy cow, P. Victoria takes a shot on me. Now I'm working on my driver who I fix, and the T-49 is not paying attention, so I try to track. Don't do a good job of it. Back up into the P. Victoria. Not good. And guess what? He doesn't have the derp. That's what I thought he had, which he didn't, and that's actually good news. Although he has a faster rate of fire. I am not going to get penned for all my hit points. But it turns out that was probably even more effective because had he HE'd me and I survived and didn't get penned, which I shouldn't have with my front armor pointing at him, I probably would have ended up taking less damage overall. So I see him making a run for it. I'll wait for that shot. And now I'm crawling up here trying to get into the rocks. And we have one, finally. And guess what? How did that ha How did we just take that hill? Raise your hand if you know. Because the damn... Darn bottom tier medium pushed into them. Something one of those heavies could have done, 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 could have done minutes ago. This is one of the things that drives me crazy about this game. When people do not recognize overmatches and that they have got to make something happen. And just sitting there playing peekaboo is eventually going to be a loss. Now I'm taking chances. I come up here. I make him miss. I'm waiting for my health kit to repair. So I can get my driver back in the game. A medium with no driver, that's painful. Now the Tiger's coming up. I've got guys sitting over here playing peekaboo with the IS-3. None of them really seems to understand that there's a Tiger coming up behind them. See how they're not even paying attention? Now the T-43 comes in, and he's like, YOLO, I'm a T-43. 
try to track him. I get that in there. Now I'm going to try to, even though my gunner is a little goofy here. Oh, that was not good. I let him do that. I should not have driven into that shot. Low rolls me a bit with 135. So it looks like actually he's, it would appear that he's got the smaller gun. I actually outstick that guy with my gun. So I go ahead and take him down. So he does not appear to have the top gun. That's good news. And now we're pushing in. So I'm at 2,456. And our biggest problem right now, I was initially going to call this a toxic loss. You're going to find out why in just a minute. I've already been hammered by artillery anyway. And there's three, of the, three artillery on their side. We have managed to lose all of ours. And really, we are at quite a disadvantage now because coming up here is out in the open. I probably should not have gone here. It probably would have been a better idea to go somewhere else, but I knew that there was a guy in the cap. And look where all my friends who took so long to take the hill are. Well, that's pretty typical. They're all sitting up on the hill right there. 2,639, 35 seconds. Maybe should have waited a little bit. It looks like the, jet, the Jag Tiger might get killed, but these are all one shot. So as I'm looking at this, I'm thinking, you know what? I mean, artillery is eventually going to knock all these guys out of the game. So I need to go ahead and see if I can't get lucky and take down this T-92. I was hoping he wasn't looking. He was looking. I survived that shot. I knew I could probably take one, but I knew I couldn't take another. Unfortunately, backing right into one of the three artillery, we actually end up losing this game, which is a bit surprising because if you just looked at the setup right now, you'd say they got a pretty good chance. But the JT is over there. There's no artillery to bother him. All these guys ha are doing is poking on a JT plus three artillery, and this just goes south from there. So 2,917 damage, bottom tier. Doing the best that I can. Not really a toxic loss. I guess I actually only got hit by artillery once. I'm not sure. I might have been hit on that hill. I don't remember right there. But as I came up into that open, I knew I was taking a chance with artillery. In fact, it was pretty surprising. I survived as long as I did, probably because they were all looking at the guys peeking and poking up on the hill up there. But quite frankly, had they been able to take that hill a little sooner, we might have been able to preserve some of our other hit points on the other side of the map. They spent so long messing around with the three tanks up there that by then it is a time and hit point equation and they'd lost too many hit points and time when they could have uh, traded some of their hit points for a little more hit point loss on the enemy team. I know I'm not explaining that very good, but there was a point in time earlier in the match earlier while they were fighting there, where if one of, or two of them had traded some hit points right away, they would have gunned down the three guys much quicker and probably not lost as much hit points as they did by hanging out. And that's that's the important thing to understand about overmatches right there. If you peek and poke, you're playing into the defender's strengths. He's going to probably peel a few more hit points off of you than he otherwise would have had you simply pushed into him, accepted a couple early hits, and then wiped them out and not let them have as many shots as you ultimately would let them have by playing peek and poke. That's a hard concept to understand, and a lot of players, especially new players, they can't quite wrap their minds around that right there, but it is something to think about. The, the I'm going to say icing on the cake, but it's not really icing on the cake. There's another deeper level to that, and that's the RNG. And the vagaries of RNG can actually tip that scale in either way, but it probably plays again to the defender's strengths. And with RNG and the peak and poke, sometimes you can lose quite a bit of hit points by hanging out. And it's simply better to get in, get side shots, minimize the effect of RNG on these kind of little snipey shots on people's little weak spots and turret tops and all that stuff, and just get rid of those guys. So there you go, 2,900, almost 3,000 damage in a loss. Ace tanker, T-34-1. Thanks for tuning in. I appreciate your support of the channel. Think about all that stuff. It'll make you a better player, and we will see you.